हे एवरीबडी मैं हूँ प्रिया और आप देख रहे हैं फिनोलॉजी लीगल आज से कुछ दिन पहले अपने इंस्टाग्राम पेज पे मैंने आप सबसे पूछा था कि अगर एल एल एम के अराउंड या क्लैट के अराउंड आपको कोई भी क्वेरी हो कोई भी डाउट हो तो आप मुझे बताइए एंड आई हेल्प यू विद इट तो आज की इस वीडियो में हम एल एल एम के अराउंड जो भी मेजर डाउट्स है जो भी मेजर क्वेश्चन है उसे आंसर करने की कोशिश करेंगे ये वीडियो थोड़ी लंबी है तो थोड़ा पेशेंस रखिएगा एंड आई प्रोमिस यू आपके मेजर डाउट सॉल्व होंगे जैसे क्या इंडिया में एन से ही एल करने का फायदा है या कुछ ऐसे छिपे हुए कॉलेजेस है जहां से भी आप एल कर सकते हैं दूसरा अगर आप जुडिशरी के लिए प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं या आपको प्रैक्टिस ही करनी है तो क्या आपको एल करना चाहिए और आने वाले टाइम पे ऐसी कौन सी स्पेशलाइजेशन हैं जो काम आएंगी ऐसी बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन हम सॉल्व करेंगे आज की इस वीडियो में तो चलिए इस वीडियो को स्टार्ट करते हैं हेलो सर वेलकम टू फिनोलॉजी लीगल uh i'll start at the question with what was your journey how did you decide to take law as a career option kya kya internships aapne kiye kya kya aapke experiences the and then finally how did you decide ki koi professor banna hai so priya thank you for uh, giving me this chance to speak to you uh, i have only recently started seeing your videos and realized that you have a large following uh, but uh, you know you, we need people like you to spread awareness about the law and uh, it's a good thing that you are doing it also in hindi Uh, because many of us who are teaching in the national law schools uh, are catering to a very elite audience hum log angrezi mein sari teaching karte hain aur jaise maine aapko pehle bataya recording se ki meri apni khud ki hindi bahut kharab ho gayi hai kyunki bolna hi chhod diya hai but uh, let me begin with answering your question uh, so my uh, i pursued my 5 year b llb between 2003 and 2008 and uh, to be completely honest uh, at that time the competition for getting into these national law schools was not very intense Uh, to give you an example, uh, when I wrote the entrance exam uh, in 2003, uh, there were only around 5,000 applicants for the undergraduate program. Oh. And this year, I, last year, I think you must be aware of it, since you are involved in coaching and training, uh, that there were more than 50,000 for undergraduate and I think 10,000 for PG. Yes, sir. And this year, I believe from my friends who are part of the organizing uh, committee, that the number will be much more. Yes, because, because the, the exams COVID, are getting postponed, sir. So. Yeah, and also because of the COVID situation, of course, now some parents may withdraw, but it's still a number which will keep growing. So at that time, it was not as competitive uh, to get in. And to be completely honest with you, uh, I had not really thought about studying law very seriously. Uh, you know, at that time, everybody or very many classmates, uh, engineering and medical, were studying law. And uh, I come from Chandigarh, so it's a relatively comfortable city. You know, with good schools. Uh, and good resources so we were uh, from a privileged background uh, and i also went to a very good school a private school in chandigarh so we had a good you know support structure uh, in terms of our families and coaching but most of my classmates were all preparing for engineering and medical and i also tried that route uh, but i realized that physics chemistry and maths was not for me uh, so you know so see for me i i took pcm in 11th and 12th and then yeah so i in fact uh, did not do in fact the, the engineering entrances i did very badly So in fact, uh, law was the second option because you know I was not getting admission oh. to a good engineering college, so ended up doing law as the second option. And in fact, I attended. Uh, I'm not sure if I told you when you were part of our LLM. Uh, I in fact went to Simbiasis Pune for one year uh, because at that time, uh, it, when I wrote the entrance exam, I was overconfident, so I marked a lot of. There was negative marking in 2002, and I ended up getting into Simbiasis. And many of the other national law schools had simply not emerged. So NLS was the best best known option, and NALSA and NUJS were very new. Not even one batch had graduated. So I ended up getting into NLS when I wrote the exam again. So that's just the procedural part, you know, how I accidentally ended up getting into law school. Uh, but the actually, the motivation was after law school. Me, after that, it became. So, for example, uh, you know, students have different kinds of interests and motivations. And the good thing about the five-year program is that it gives you a lot of time, you know, to explore yourself and to explore your interests. uh in comparison let's say the lm program which you had attended with us uh that is actually more intensive and more rigorous and now you know since 2013 we have the one year llm uh which is yes. very hard for students you know you could see that even you and your classmates were really struggling at times to keep up with the deadlines and coursework so uh, in my five years actually i took part in a lot of co curricular activities so we were very lucky that uh, at nls uh, at that time the administration really encouraged students to do things on their own 
Uh, so I think even in uh, Nalsar or other law schools, you must have seen a similar approach uh, that more or less yes, all sir. the major activities are organized by students themselves. So whether it's guest lectures or moot courts or debates or some of your own conferences or workshops. So these are very student-centric institutions. Uh, and faculty largely only li is limited to the role of teaching and you know formal instruction. So that space was very useful. And I personally was actually spending more time in co-curricular activities like quizzing or debating. Uh, but uh, over five years, uh, I, it, 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 my interests actually moved towards the public law side. Uh, I was a bit, I found it a little difficult to do well in the corporate law subjects. So most of our corporate law subjects, uh, sub subjects like company law, banking, insurance were all taught in the third and fourth year. And, you know, I really struggled to pass in most of them. <laughs> but the good thing was that in NLS and now in many other schools, uh, in the fifth year, you could act as a teaching assistant uh, for one of the young, young, earlier courses. So, in fact, uh, even at Talsar, right now where I'm teaching, uh, both fifth year students and LLM students are given the chance to become teaching assistants, uh, where they can assist yes. in the teaching of the courses for younger batches, especially for second year and in Nalsar third year also. So, when I was a fifth year student, I got a chance to be a teaching assistant uh, with a senior professor at, at, at NLS, uh, Professor Elizabeth, uh, who is now the Vice Chancellor of Tamil Nadu National Law School. So, she took me as her teaching assistant and I think that was a great opportunity. So I finished my LLB in 2008. Uh, then I applied for a judicial clerkship uh, in Delhi. Uh, and I got a chance to do a clerkship under uh, Chief Justice Balakrishnan, uh, who was who was a CJI at that time. And then after two years, I applied for a master's abroad. Uh, so luckily, since my family had the financial resources uh, and I got a partial scholarship, so I was able to pursue the LLM degree at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, uh, which is a very expensive degree. So, you know, in, in, in 2020, I would not recommend it to everybody. And, uh, and, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, and uh, since I did, I did the LLM, uh, I again had actually tried for a, a doctoral program straight away. Uh, but that year, I was not getting into a funded program. So uh, after having paid the fees for a one-year master's in the US, which was very costly, uh, it was not practical to pursue a PhD after from, uh, by paying from your own pocket. Uh, so that's why I came back to India. And initially, I was teaching in uh, NLS itself uh, in an ad hoc position. Uh, but in 2013 onwards, uh, I have been at Nalsa. Uh, okay. That's the broad journey. So generally, when young uh, teachers are in the debate about whether LLM ke baad ya LLB ke baad they should get a lot of experience and then go to teaching, mm -hmm. or a straight, fresh teacher, what do you support more? Yeah. So actually, that's an excellent question. And, uh, you know, that discussion comes up with every LLM batch uh, that we get. Like, you were part of the 2016-17 batch. But this is a question which all students ask us, you know, after they finish the LLM. And my personal take is that, uh, you know, even if you want to teach uh, either in a public university or a private law school. So, I personally think that, you know, it's important for everyone to get some practical experience. Uh, even if you want to teach, let's say, a basic subject like contracts or constitutional law. Uh, you know, it's important for you to understand how law operates in an actual setting. And, you know, even if you look at uh, for those uh, for those students who do have the financial resources uh, or support from their families to go abroad later, uh, even there, you know, if you look at some of the master's programs in US or UK or the, or, or the Western nations, uh, they also prefer candidates with some work experience. Uh, so, for example, okay. those who apply for LLM programs in, uh, in schools like Columbia or Stanford, uh, their admission criteria says that you must have at least two years of work experience. And the other thing, okay. even if you are going to programs on scholarship, uh, let's say in European universities or Australia, in all these programs, the further, the more work experience you have, the better chance you have of getting admitted and getting a scholarship. So I think this is a fact which is not very well discussed in Indian law schools. A lot of students are not very clear as to how the system works. But let's say even if you want to do an LLM in India at one of the better universities, uh, I would still recommend at least two to three years of work experience. Uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about evidence or criminal procedure in the classroom. But if you don't have to cut the chair, if you don't have frustration, if you don't have to face it, you won't understand how the criminal law is practicing. So whichever area it might be, even corporate law, uh, I would personally suggest uh, get some practical experience first, earn some money, and then think yes. about this. So that brings me to the question, ki, uh, NLU, Say LLM kana, is that real, does that really make a difference? Or second, how can students make a, take a better informed decision ki LLM karna chahiye ya nahi karna chahiye? Uh, you know, to be completely honest, uh, LLM degree may not be suitable for everybody. Uh, you know, for example, uh, agar aapne LLB kiya hai, 
और आपका एम है कि आपकी ऑलरेडी एक फैमिली प्रैक्टिस है उसको ज्वाइन करना है और और लोअर कोर्स पे प्रैक्टिस करना है तो एल का कोई खास लॉन्ग टर्म वैल्यू नहीं है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू प्रैक्टिस इन योर होम टाउन यू नो वेर यू हैव टू स्पीक इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज वे योर क्लाइंट्स विल कम फ्रॉम योर कास्ट एंड कम्युनिटी यू नो दैट्स द नॉम इन इंडिया सो इन इन सच अचुएशन इट मेक्स सेंस टू स्टेट वे स्टार्ट वर्किंग अंडर अ लॉयर एंड यू नो एंड गेट दैट प्रोफेशनल एक्सपीरियंस uh similarly you know there are some students uh, as you correctly said uh, you know who have attended these newer colleges but they felt that they were deprived of certain opportunities because of the branding of the college so i think for some students uh, who are in that category uh, pursuing a nlu llm can help but you should be very clear about what you want to get out of it and i think that's the practical problem that you're pointing out that many students simply yes. don't have the resources or networks you know to judge what whether the program will benefit them or not so for example you know you may remember this but uh, in every batch when they join uh, the common question in the llm orientation is uh, will the program help us get commercial law firm jobs so uh, you know there are some students uh, for whom actually pursuing the llm can help uh, in getting jobs uh, if not in the top commercial law firms let's say in in banks uh, or psus or in house positions so you know we have many people who do the llm with us and then get those jobs Uh, then of course the university's main aim is that the llm is a feeder into a career in teaching uh, but you know a career in teaching has a very slow growth uh, you don't get your opportunities straight away like after the llm you have to clear the ugc net to become at least to apply for regular positions in many places even ugc net is mandatory and after that yes. uh, even uh, if you want to pursue teaching or research in the long run you have to do a phd which is what we can come yes. to later but at the last stage of entering the llm you know uh, students need to be very clear whether the content of this degree will help me in the long run so for example if you are looking to litigate uh, especially in let's say a district district court uh, in criminal practice or civil practice then the llm does not have much value let me be very honest because yes. lower courts uh, most of the arguments are in the in the in the, in the native language of that state uh, much of the work is actually interacting with clients and confidence building and learning how to deal with judges and your fellow lawyers in a you know in a court complex so you know so that social experience you can only learn with with experience and the llm may not really make much of a difference but for those students who are looking to improve their prospects uh, either for recruitments in law firms or banks or psus or even teaching which is of course what we think students should be doing but we can't be imposing our view uh, on everybody so there definitely nlu llms have a certain advantage but i must personally say that there are many good llm programs in india outside the nlu circle also so one of the difficulties is that now that there are 22 nlus in fact if you include delhi uh, which comes under ilet there are 23 nlus so many students uh, unfortunately uh, don't do enough research on what the status of the llm program is so uh, i think students should make a more informed choice but my personal suggestion would be that uh, uh, for those who are thinking of llm uh, for different career paths think beyond the nlus also uh, so for example some okay. of the newer institutions uh, like azim premji university which offers a law and development llm uh, or tata institute institute of social sciences in bombay yes. they have an access to justice llm or the terry institute in delhi which offers a environmental law llm uh, or indian law institute which is a, an older institution they have a llm and a llm phd for teaching so i think depending on your career path you must choose because uh, if you blindly go for the brand name uh, it may not work for you So, अगर एक किसी बच्चे ने ये डिसाइड किया हुआ है कि ही वांट्स टू एंटर इनटू जुडिशरी या लिटिगेशन तो क्या उसे फिर क्लाट करना चाहिए प्रमोशन के बेसिस पे या फिर किसी भी चीज के लिए इफ ही इज डिसाइडेड कि टीचिंग उसे नहीं करनी है राइट हां सो आई थिंक फॉर जुडिशरी द आंसर इज स्लाइटली कॉम्प्लिकेटेड जुडिशियल सर्विसेज नाउ इज अ वेरी गुड करियर ऑप्शन बिकॉज़ द पे स्केल्स वर इंप्रूव्ड कंसीडरेबली अर्लियर अबाउट 10 इयर्स अगो बाय द सिक्स्थ पे कमीशन Uh, and it's a prestigious and socially important job you know you're you're actually the the, the main limb of the judiciary which is working at the district level and and over time uh, prospects for career growth will also increase you know if you enter the judiciary before the age of 30 years these days then there's a very good chance that you will get promoted to the high court uh, at a later stage you know because high court vacancies are considerable and more and more people are being promoted from lower judiciary uh, with time so it's a very good career option so can the nlu llm or any llm uh, help in the judiciary Uh, it can help to perform that function of a gap year if you are uh, having a very long selection process or you are giving multiple attempts uh, but don't expect that what is taught in the llm will directly help you with the judicial services so uh, litigation as i said i personally think uh, that that for lower court litigation uh, llm will not make a difference in the long run uh, but yes it can make a difference especially for students you know who come from smaller towns 
uh, who can get exposure at NLU and then join an appellate practice. Then that brand of LLM from a well-known school can help you. In the recent times, we've seen an active discussion around nepotism. Now, a lot of people label litigation as a family business, as a family profession. What are your thoughts about it? This is, you know, the stereotype which we have about Indian lawyers. कि सारे district courts में कुछ ही पांच-छह लोग हैं जो पूरी litigation control करते हैं, या फिर high courts में, you know, you have a few senior advocates who get most of the work, and the others are all starving or they don't have a source of work. And Supreme Court has a similar story. Uh, that you know, even yes. amongst the class of senior advocates, there is a class of elite advocates uh, whose names are always there in the media. They're always appearing in the most important cases. So the theory is that the legal market is actually reflecting a concentration of power. It's almost like a monopoly, you know, which a few families might have. But uh, I would personally say, since economic reforms started in India, that has changed. Uh, okay. Two big reasons are that the market for legal services is now simply not limited to. appearing in court you see until the 1980s until our parent generation primarily litig- law was understood as ki kachari ka vakil ki jo ke, jo jo court mein appear ho raha hai aur aur client ke liye relief le raha hai that was the okay. understanding of a lawyer but uh, now as you must have also be discussing in your uh, series over 30 years the nature of legal practice has changed radically right so for the elite section of course there is corporate law or commercial law where you are not spending time in court but you are actually assisting in drafting contracts negotiating deals performing due diligence and so on but you know even apart from corporate law even if you look at routine litigation uh, whether it is rent litigation uh, whether it is uh, whether it is criminal law uh, whether it is revenue litigation uh, i think work is more and more open to those who are willing to do it so for instance i can count many people you know who are first generation lawyers uh, amongst my friends uh, you know who have studied at very unknown places small places but are still doing very well in litigation and the main reason is that they saw they took a long term perspective because in litigation you know unfortunately rewards will not come within the first 5 or 10 years uh, of joining your practice and many things are learnt only through experience law schools can't teach you that so for those who are you know thinking about careers in litigation uh, yes a family background helps in the initial stages and sometimes things are unfair a lot of people get clients simply because of their caste name or their religious identity but uh, you know that's true for many other professions also so 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 what i think what people should keep in mind is that if you really want to litigate you must a be very clear where you want to litigate which forums you may want to litigate in for example many of my own classmates uh, who actually who came from elite school like nls uh, but did not have a family background are actually now doing very well in litigation because they were smart about their choices Long so to realize that straight away practicing in delhi high court or bombay high court may not be the right strategy because there is already the concentration of work in a few hands so they chose to begin their practice in specialized forums uh, like electricity tribunals like administrative tribunals consumer forums and then you know once you get a certain visibility in these forums then you can come and join the high court bar so so people have to find strategies to you know establish themselves over time and jaise uh, filmon mein kehte hain ki litigation lambi race lambi race hai to agar aapko practice karni hai chahe wo lower court mein ho ya appellate court mein ho तो आपको लंबी रेस का घोड़ा बनना पड़ेगा कि अगर आप इवन इफ यू डोंट कम फ्रॉम अ लीगल फैमिली फॉर लिटिगेशन सपोर्ट फ्रॉम योर फैमिली इज इम्पोर्टेंट यू नो बिकॉज यू नो फॉर दोज ऑफ अस हू कम फ्रॉम लाइक आई कम फ्रॉम अपर मिडिल क्लास बैकग्राउंड सो आई कैन से दिस लिटिल कैजुअली बट मेनी स्टूडेंट्स हू कम फ्रॉम पुअर बैकग्राउंड और लोअर मिडिल क्लास बैकग्राउंड इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ योर पेरेंट्स कैन यू नो गिव यू प्लेस टू स्टे इन योर ट्वेंटीज डिस्पाइट है डिग्री दैट्स अग डील Uh, because if you don't you know have if you can't pay the rent in a large city if you can't make your living expenses uh, then litigation automatically becomes a difficult option for many people so there are many stories of you know who people who came to delhi uh, and tried their luck uh, but after four or five years they could not manage or survive so sometimes you know it makes sense to start in your hometown or your native state or, or the state capital of your own state because there you might have the support of your family and other networks uh, which can get you past the initial years So my next question is around the drastic change that has happened with the CLAT paper pattern this year. What do you think is the real motivation behind this pattern change? Uh, the composition of the CLAT consortium is basically all the vice chancellors of the national law schools. And one thing which people may have found is that last year there were three or four new vice chancellors who have joined. So what has happened yes. is that this group of vice chancellors uh, has actually changed slightly. In the last one year, four or five new vice chancellors have come, and slightly younger people have come. Uh, so usually most of the vice chancellors are in their late 50s or 60s but now for a change you have three or four people who are in their 40s also 
and uh, what happens is with newer people entering a system you know they want to try new solutions and they want to respond to certain problems many llm students who were getting in were telling us that the entrance pattern was not suited to the nature of study so hindi mein agar main kahu ki jo exam mein aapko test kar rahe hain jin 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 skills ke liye uska jo llm mein padhaya ja raha hai usse kuch connection nahi tha so what we are doing is we are trying to change that so i am not personally involved but i know some of the people who are part of the consortium uh, and this time you know rather than leaving the matter to one particular law school uh, what they have done is they have appointed a full team uh, to oversee the clat so the vice chancellors of the national law schools you know these days are only doing virtual meetings uh, but there is a team in place which is designing the exam uh, which now because now because of the covid situation they have to manage hundreds of centers so so that team is actually a new team uh, so there is bound to be a change in the content of the exam Uh, and the format of the exam the basic point is that now the exam will test you on skills or knowledge which will be directly connected to what is taught so that was one problem that was being remedied uh, the other issue was that uh, many teachers as well as recruiters uh, felt that the llm exam had to be made more difficult but uh, this is the reality because we were getting feedback that uh, the llm program has to be made more competitive and and to ensure that what you are being tested upon in the llm is also making you suitable for the study Uh, of what is actually taught so any specific specialization that students should opt for if they are opting for llm specifically for job purposes any specific yeah. specialization so so you know so for students who are looking to uh, apply for internships and jobs uh, in in law firms uh, or in as in house counsel the most obvious is business law or corporate law uh, generally a business law or corporate law specialization uh, will give you paper optional subjects like uh, capital markets uh, you know where you discuss the role of the sebi Uh, and the various rules of listing of shares and regulation of share listing uh, then there will be papers focused on traditional company law uh, india has a new companies act in 2013 so it takes time to understand and appreciate how these changes have taken place what practical impact they have then you have newer areas like insolvency and bankruptcy so generally subjects like capital markets or uh, company law or uh, insolvency and bankruptcy and competition law these subjects are normally taught as part of a corporate law or business law cluster So I think for those who are looking to work in the corporate sector, either as advisors uh, or as transactional lawyers, these are this is the area you must uh, you must choose. Uh, there are some people, of course, who are looking to join IP law firms. So depending on the capacity of the school, uh, you can take a specialization in intellectual property. But I think even if you look at the list of NNUs, uh, not everybody has a specialization in intellectual property, right? So again, you must find out who the actual teachers are and whether or not enough courses are being offered. and in ip normally you would do courses in copyright uh, in patent or sometimes yes. in designs uh, but 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 generally i think the the normal preference is to do a specialization in corporate or business law uh, if that's the sector of choices that you are looking at now with respect to those students who have decided that they want to pursue teaching as a career options how can they build a better cv when, whenever you finish your llm usually by the time you finish your llm uh, you are working on a dissertation usually even yes. in the one year format or the earlier two two year format in the two year format i personally think our uh, students had a slightly easier time uh, because they would get a full semester the fourth semester would be devoted to writing a dissertation uh, in a one year llm you know they hardly get two two three months so which i think is a little difficult for students uh, especially when they have not had access to research assignments earlier so that's a common problem that you know we are also trying to address but my personal suggestion would be that if you're looking to apply for a research associate job which is what you will get straight away after llm uh, or if you let's say have work experience and net then you might actually get straight away get a assistant professor job concentrate on getting publications uh, because then you know if you are applying for a research associate job or a teaching job or later even if you are applying for a phd program uh, at a good law university uh, they will judge you by the quality of your written work so for example i know that for many students as you correctly said uh, uh, who may not have had the previous exposure of writing Uh, in projects or blogs or uh, the llm is sometimes their first exposure right their first serious exposure to writing long papers so use the llm smartly to generate some papers uh, which can go into your publications resume so it's not possible to sometimes uh, get publications in good peer reviewed journals within one year but at least the foundation can be set so students can start by sending their articles to well known popular blogs uh, which are focused on specialized areas uh, if they have written for example a seminar paper or a response paper they can convert what they have written in the llm into a publishable piece you know which will help them build their resume and then i think the dissertation is very important uh, because for anyone who is looking to apply for a phd uh, or a research or teaching job 
uh, your dissertation will be an important criteria uh, which interview committees or selection committees will look at so they will uh, they will of course look at the kind of topic that you have chosen uh, but by reading the dissertation a selection committee can really judge you know how capable you are uh, in terms of conducting more research in the long run so whether it is joining a research associate job an assistant professor job uh, or a phd program uh, i would say the dissertation makes a big difference uh, and and even uh, despite that the student should try to publish uh, in some well known uh, uh, sources so that, that that resume keeps building up over time okay so what would you suggest llm from top for nlus or llm from abroad uh so i think for most people it's a question of uh, financial resources so you know if you have a limited budget uh and you can't really afford the costs of a foreign uh, jurisdiction uh then i think you should look at the options within india uh so again i said that at the moment if you look at the llb program uh broadly we count uh, bangalore hyderabad calcutta delhi jodhpur these are considered to be the five better known schools Uh, of course newer schools like gandhinagar and bhopal also have very good student bodies uh, their students also do exceptionally well and i have no doubt that even newer schools like uh, katak uh, or raipur are actually coming up very well you know sometimes it's also a function of what kind of leadership uh, the school gets but i would not say the same thing for llm uh, because if you blindly go with the rankings which are given largely on the basis of the llb and where students are getting placed or what the school is doing uh, then it may portray a very misleading picture about the llm Uh, for the llm i think you must investigate who are the senior experienced faculty who are involved in teaching the llm program uh, whether the school actually gives enough time and attention to the llm program i think that's a basic problem because llm students only come for one year so they don't have the same kind of voice or influence on the system uh, which students who spent five years would have you know it's a basic uh, element of human nature if you spend more time in the institution you become a repeat player and you have more of a say in how things are run Uh, but if you spend a shorter period of time even the system will not have so much of a uh, response to you so my personal suggestion is that apart from the top 4 nlus in terms of the llb rankings 4 5 nlus a uh, think about some of the newer options where the programs might be smaller but they are better suited to your interests right so that's why i took okay. the example of uh, azim prem ji which has very good faculty members uh, but their focus is more on law and development which means they want to prepare teachers as well as people people for the development sector uh then you have tata institute of social sciences uh, or teri or ili or uh, all of whom and or south asian university uh, which has a small llm program which is focused on comparative and international law so i think the question you should be asking is what is the area of specialization that i am most interested in and where can i get the best set of resources and teachers for that in the country so i think that should be the question to ask uh, rather than simply going for the nlu list speaking of now what are the newer uh, arenas that people are progressing towards for example copywriting or startup ideas what do you see students going towards yeah so in the last 2 to 3 years to be honest the new area which is really emerging is technology law uh you know because we were taught technology law in a very narrow way in the past either you would have a token course on ip uh in your llb or if you did a llm you know sometimes you would get a paper on patent law or copyright law and where you had teachers you would teach internet law which was basically the law of free speech on the internet right Uh, so it was more extension of constitutional law rather than understanding of the technology but these days i think uh, both in terms of student interest and career outcomes uh, newer areas for example uh, like like data privacy uh, or blockchain technology have emerged in a big way and these are technologies uh, which have an implication for a much larger mass of people so as opposed to the first generation of technology law subjects like patent law or or internet law Uh, i think areas like uh, privacy law or or blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies they are the areas of the future because more and more startups are investing in what we call the fintech space and uh, just as there are experiments with financial technology there are also applications of technology to the other areas like healthcare like education for example you are part of that space so so i think uh, the, there are legal dimensions to all of these areas and certainly technology law is emerging as a field of uh, which we need to consider more seriously in fact we have to hire more people so that we can offer courses uh, which are devoted to technology law and look at other aspects of the sphere as well uh, so traditional oh. patent law would look at basically the pharmaceutical sector right uh, similarly copyright would primarily focus on the music and film industry and, uh, and 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 the third course internet law would largely focus on content regulation on the internet but now i think we need to seriously invest in our capacity to be able to deliver meaningful teaching and research 
uh, in newer areas, uh, which are which are which are which are important for practice. That uh, I know that for many students, pursuing the LLM is a finan important financial decision uh, because the fee at one of the NLUs can be easily between one and a half to two lakhs, and then you pay hostel and living expenses. Uh, at some of the other new institutions, also the fee might be slightly lower or more, but it is an investment of your time. Uh, and for many people, the question is that if I already have an LLB, why should I give up professional experience uh, to pursue an LLM? Right? I could use that one year to earn some income, whether I work in a law firm, a company, or a NGO, or any other organization. So I think that's the question which you need to consider more closely, because many of your viewers uh, will come from different income backgrounds. I mean, not everybody is in a position to invest that money straight away. Uh, uh, so, so make a very clear and informed choice if you do the LLM. Right? Just to quickly sum up, my personal suggestion would be uh, try and do an LLM after acquiring some work experience. And then you will be able to decide on what you want to do in your LLM more, more carefully. And more importantly, you can judge and, and take a program which will help you for your further career. So that's one, one, one important factor. The second important factor is if you do get admitted into the LLM, it's giving you access to a social environment which you otherwise would not get. And most importantly, the friendships and networks that you form uh, sometimes can be lifelong uh, networks. So they can actually help you not just in terms of seeking personal or private forms of support, uh, but even in terms of professional opportunities. For example, it is shown globally uh, that many of the law firms which become stronger over time uh, were started by people who were classmates in college or were friends in college. Uh, or for that matter, even if people, let's say, become entrepreneurs, uh, the kind of networks you build during your, co your college years does have a role to play uh, in your subsequent uh, success. So very simply, suno sab ki par karo apne man ki. So this was today's video, LLM Care Round. If you have any question that has not been answered from this video, then you can also answer me in the comment box. With this, you can connect me on my Instagram page. I hope that today's video will be liked. That's it for now. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.